So after uh, after about ten minutes of watching this, which happens every time I open my browser because it opens the tabs from last time, and actually, usually I switch off my internet. In fact, this time it was on. Or my screen goes off and I come back and it's like this. So as you can see, it's not loading. Uh, if I switch my internet off, if I leave my computer on sleep and come back, then the ECWID or ECWID control panel tells me it could not perform this action. Was, of course you couldn't, I was switched off. But uh, what script is on my computer that you've put there to tell Equid to reload or to save or to auto save or whatever without my permission. So offline, you're putting scripts on my computer telling Equid and you're actually downloading the whole uh, control panel because actually I can see it in my temp files. You're downloading everything and JavaScript things to save yourself uh, energy on the server. But look what happens. So let's refresh it. Well, myequid.com, CP product mode, what's this, yeah? And uh, another thing, so I'm going in now. We're going to go to this one, because I have multiple shops. About seven, two silver and two normal. Uh, two uh, early adopters. I did have one unlimited, which was so little different from my $17 a month early adopter for life without removing any features that were there when I signed up, which you have because some of the features that were there when I signed up since Lightspeed have taken over, they have removed. Yeah such as the calendar for uh, sales on the sales page. They moved it to the dashboard and made it last 30 days or all time, but no calendar. And then they go, and, without your permission, you go and install here, somewhere in the menu here, uh, the demographics app from Kraken or whatever it's called. I don't know what it's called, which is one of your affiliates and probably somebody at Lightspeed or Equid because it got installed here on the what's new thing, wherever that is, I don't know, because you keep changing this around so much that I haven't a clue what's going on. Look, this won't even scroll here. I'm scrolling. How do I scroll that? How do I scroll this? This won't scroll. This scrolls unequally with this. This I can scroll and when I scroll this, I want to just scroll this, I can't. Horrible scrolling effect between this sidebar and this. Yeah, absolutely horrible. So, another thing I wanted to show you. What's that doing in my face? What's that doing in my face? I want to see products, I don't want to see this. I don't want to see this big chunk in front of my face. When I come to products, I want to see what? Oh, it's at the bottom, okay. That's what I want to see. I know for newbies who've just arrived, that should always be there, export products and import products. I don't think it needs to be so chunky when you're doing all this unchunky, yeah? And also you can... This does not appear until you click. Well, that's stupid. Yeah, oh, it does. It's there. This, uh, how many products selected is not there until you click. That's ridiculous. Making buttons for the sake of buttons. Why don't you just leave it like that? And you can click it. Why does it have to change into a button? Why does it have to be a button? What the hell? Why is this ridiculous? It's horrible. <laughs> That's really horrible. I'm sorry. 
Anyway, let's go in here. I wanted to show you something that, uh, what I'm having to do is because on my store, when I do related products, because I sell one of everything and add new products every day, because I sell uh, quite, or oh, not just one of everything, but in this shop not, but sometimes I only have one, sometimes I have two or three, and then they're sold out. And so, this feature here, check five random products from catalog. I'll just put it on 50 to demonstrate. Now we're going to see these products are not out of stock as far as I know. I added them manually a couple of days ago. Because if I add 50 random products, yeah, I'm afraid what's going to happen is you don't... You don't... That's horrible too. You don't even realize if you've added the product to the line or not. It's horrible interface. Uh, 50 random products from catalog. This save button up here doesn't appear sometimes when I'm editing and made a change until I try to change tabs. And then sometimes I'm typing something in a product. Anyway, I'll go to that point later. So, 50 random products. We're going to see to here in stock, apart from maybe one or two. Because the recommended products doesn't take out of stock products out so when i do a preview we'll just go past the in stock products i manually added one by one which also has a problem searching for them by sku because it doesn't find them unless oh, well, i'll show you that it does find them but sometimes it doesn't the search is terrible so let's go down to the bottom here these are ones i put in i didn't know that was sold out i put it in thinking it wasn't so these, where well you can say, you may also like, yeah? You can see I've got two items sold out, which I myself accidentally added. The rest, because most of the stuff in my stop short, store, I might have 5,000 items in there, four or 5,000 items, 3,500 of them are out of stock. I've sold them already. Why don't I hide out of stock products? Because... Every single uh, product, I see, I don't want to, you see, I clicked on that and nothing happened. So here is where we went to with my in stock products ends here with this one. Now look, if I hadn't placed these in stock products here, what you would be seeing would be beginning here with this one out of stock, this one out of stock. So you may also like, you may also be interested in, this is what happens. This is what they see. Sold out, 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 sold out. One thing in stock, two things in stock, the rest all sold out. Now why, my question is, why are you including and I'm going to take that out as well which one was it that was sold out this one was sold out the other one I'm not sure because I've noticed since I have stopped using this automated now look how long that takes to save. That was about 10 seconds to save. That's ridiculous when you're trying to have a fast workflow. These ones in stock, so put them there manually. But when you use this, add products, yeah? I'm sorry, uh, this here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen on a five hundred megabyte to one gigabyte per second connection. Twenty five, twenty six. Look at that. That's ridiculous. I'm on a f minimum five six hundred megabytes per second in this house. 
And this browser and this Equid interface is taking up to 30 seconds usually to load each page and the same page intermittently. Yeah. So if I do 50 of all products yeah, to display, manage random recommendations, it's called random recommendations, choose the category and the number of products and a random selection of the products will be displayed on the product page each time. Yeah. In stock or out of stock. And so if 80% of your auction products are out of stock, and here doesn't tell you if it's if adding them manually like this, I don't know. So what do I have to do? If I want to add, I have to go here. If I want to add products, I have to add them manually. No. I have to add them manually and I have to go here and I have to go to the category I want or just look for things in stock. This is the latest added product, so they're mostly in stock. Yeah. Well, let's go to an older one before I stopped doing this. Before I stopped putting the recommended products in. This one should probably have some recommended products in the bottom. That can look, look how slow your pages load. It's absolutely disgusting. With that round graphic, it's just one more graphic to load for Google and the browser as well. Or for whatever search engine in the browser, bot, search bot and the browser. You know, it should just let it load. You don't need a spiral round graphic so that the idiot needs to know it's loading because he's got a graphic symbol telling him it's loading. He knows it's loading. So putting that graphic in there is just adding more weight to the load time of the web page. I don't put a loading graphic in. You're thinking too much about the slicky, spicy graphic look of the thing. And you're not thinking about the efficiency of the functionality and how fast it loads. The widget. So why don't I put my products out of stock? Because this is, firstly, uh, informational for people who can read it and then want to buy more from this monk or want to get more and or just read it. They bought one already from me or somebody else and they want to study. So it's like a blog. And they get views from this. And also, some of these pages, although Google doesn't index Equid store pages very well, this product might get indexed from Equid, but not in the store. It might turn up where I inserted the store in another website, nothing to do with amulets. And I do a search for directly using the same words to get it. For sure in Google, Kiyomu Tan Getsua, Wild Boar Tusk. And I search it in Google. Let's search it. Let's search it. This is not Google, I don't think. Though. I'm using Brave Browser because Safari doesn't function with Equid. Okay, it's come up at Thailand Amulets at Equid.com, the subdomain. Yeah, and what's here? Equid.com store amulets. What are you doing stealing my traffic, man? And here is Thailand Amulets Equid.com, and here is my but That's all your version stealing my fucking traffic with your subdomains in HTML, but putting it in PHP and Java in our domains. So that your subdomain, I don't care too much so long as some people find it, click it, and buy it. But what I do care about is, this should be on thailandamulet.net is where Google should be, whoops, it's where Google should be picking it up, yeah? thailandamulet.net is where Google should be picking it up in its home page, yeah? It should not be getting picked up. Look, it's oldamulets.com. That's mine. See, I'm making a blog post in under another keywords. But, Kyosia Tan, get wild botos. You're stealing my traffic. It's my shop, my subdomain, yeah. But why is the subdomain coming up more than the WordPress site? Better SEO. And look where it comes up. Lurcy.net. That is my website. Yeah. 
that's actually a different product. But that's also from Thailand. Have you see the Thailand amulets sign? Oh, sorry. No, that's... See here? This is the lurcy.net. Huh? It's the same one. And here I have another one in lurcy.net. So lurcy.net is picking up my product from thailandamulet.net inside a page about animal faced lurcy we have this carbocustus tiger amulet spelled by lungpo so why it's a different one but it's also store 1411 which It doesn't say the store number. But anyway, this store is, as you can see, Thailand Amulets. Thailandamulet.net. But on the top here, you see it's lurcy.net. Because you can insert the widget elsewhere. But in the Equid control panel here, under wherever you put the settings of what is my website, it's thailandemulet.net. Where is my storefront? thailandemulet.net. But how come Google picks up the store much easier in lurcy.net? Yeah? lurcy.net is a WordPress website. Yeah? And as you can see, there it is. Yeah. And it comes below the Google search result for the equid.com. Thailandemulets.equid.com gets top result. Lurcy.net gets second result. Yeah. But the actual home of it on Thailandemulet.net. The actual home of the product doesn't get found in Google, this product. And this is the website I want it to be found on because it's Thai amulets, Thailand amulets. Lurcy is about hermit gods, but I happen to have the amulet shop inserted. And it's not in the shop page. It's not in the shop page. And what did I do with this page about Lurcy, Nasa, this page I wrote? What I did was insert this category of the store, default category ID, to put the Rusi. And what I did was I inserted this. So this page, if you visit this page on my website, lurcy.net, I had inserted this here, the Rusi amulets, which is one category I have in my thailandamulet.net shop, equid shop. But somehow, even though this Rusi is the default category to be shown on arrival on this page yeah it's picking up stuff from the Altai amulets and it's picking this product up which should be on thailandamulet.net which is where I say in Equid that is my website and store in your database <coughs> that is the home of Store number 173011, Thailand Amulets. Yeah, just one of many of my stores. How come Google is not picking it up? And how come it's appearing in this Rusi? Better SEO with the Rusi. With the Rusi. How come, first of all, you're taking it here? I want to see what's this. I know what this is. It's directly the thailandemulets.equid.com and straight to the product. So what's this? You've done me three thailand-amulets.equid.com. 
Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to change the subdomain so that Google de-indexes you because I don't want your subdomain coming up powered by a quid. I want my website coming up tops. Yeah? But you have set your subdomain to be indexed by Google. So here's thailandemulators.equid.com. All Thai amulets. That was this one. Equid.com. And this is Thailand amulets to Equid.com. Why does this say Equid.com store? It's Thailand amulets to Equid.com. What are you doing? What are you doing? Hmm? That my website. At least the lucy.net. Look, you're here again. What are you doing, man? You're spamming. And where is Thailand? You know, where is thailandemulet.net in that? Where is that? You know? Look at this. It should be coming up. Oh, site, sorry. Take that out. Done it wrong. Why? Huh? Why? Why are you de indexing it? Or go go. Nothing. Need my glasses here. Look at that. How come, you fuckers? Huh? Huh? This one's getting it. There's another... Look at this, thailandemulets.equi.com, it's all there, yeah? So, if I do... Not net, it doesn't come up, why? No. Nope. So why have you deliberately made it unreadable? Or who's responsible for this? And why is this? Yeah, And I'm going to show you another problem shortly with Equid. Uh, let's just write to Crot. Because if that doesn't come up, then I will blow my head. Oh, wrong, sorry. Then I will blow my head. You see? Takut, Thailand Amulets. Thailandamulet.net. Yeah? Thailandamulet.net. 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 Takut belt by Lumpur, so why, yeah? And here I get how to write blog posts because I can see common searches, what people ask, yeah? And people who are trying to compete with me. So, Thailandamulet.net is indexed. How come the product isn't? This one is. This one is. There. But the one. Now it is. That's what I have to get. To get it. And look, it's in a page. If I don't put it in a page, it's only because I put it in the page, sub-page of Thai Lumpu in Kematewo, which is under the sub-page of Thailand Master Monks. So it's a deep link. It's a deep link. And so it is indexed in Google, as you can see. It is indexed. But not the product. The product... 
This is me posting it as a blog post. And it still doesn't come up there. It's still, the product does not come up. It's not the product. It's not the product. There's the product. Comes up inside the page. So it is a product. And it comes up inside the page for Lumpo In, who is the name of the monk. It's the biography of Lumpo In. But this is Lumpo Sawai, and I did a search word for Kiamu. Yeah? For Kiamu. Yeah? And it brought me to thailandemulet.net, but only with this site, thailandemulet.net. Search the site. Nowhere else. But if I do this, what happens? Oh, yes, I do. But what happens if you do a direct search like this? Huh? What happens here then? That's great. At least Kiamu, I get that with a shorter keyword. But you're still stealing traffic from me. Look, there you go again. Thailand, this is in Google. I was in Brave Search before. That's why there was no pictures. So Google's getting it better. But you're still taking me. Look, Thailand Amulets. .equid.com There should be thailandamulet.net and he's still not here. Old Amulets. Facebook.com That's my page, by the way. I mean, these are mine. That is a Thailand Amulet store 17301 inserted into Dharma Thai. But this should bring up this and where is this as i told you lurcy.net again which is about thai hermits this time in a different page in the home page once again but that is lurcy.net is where not where store number 173011 equid store Number, oh no, it won't scroll. It scrolls the opposite way as all other web pages as well. My scrolling button, 173011. Same with all my stores. So now, to the final thing is that when I'm looking here for something, let's say, uh, Sometimes it doesn't work. 04247. If I write down these to add them manually to the you may also like section, yeah? St stuff that's still in stock, like 04714. Sometimes it just doesn't find it. Get off. See, I keep clicking on here and it just keeps deactivating. 04714. Now, it takes 20 minutes. Oh, exaggerated, but 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I want to work. I don't want to sit here watching a clouded screen. 20, 21, 22, 23 with a 602,000 megabyte per second connection. 30 seconds. So, 04714, where? Where is it? Where is 04714? There it is at the bottom. Sometimes it's not there at all. Sometimes it's not there at all. Yeah? And why is this coming up tops? Yeah? Because if I don't go 047. 714, a second time. Oh, it won't hit. It just keeps jumping my cursor. 0104, 714. Why I keep clicking? Oh, 4. I keep clicking, huh? 4, 714. Stop it. 04, 714, 14. What's going on? It's not doing what I'm asking. 
O, four, seven, one, four. No, stop, print seven, one, four. Now it comes up tops, you see? Now it comes up tops. Now it's coming up tops. Yeah? So I can add that. But look what happened the first time I did it. Yeah? So let's take another one. All right? Oh, four, one, four, six. Does it find it straight away? No, sorry. Oh, four. Oh, four, one, four, six. Okay, this one, find it. I'll add that as well. But you see the point? That if I search for something, 02530, sometimes it won't find it at all. It really won't. Nothing comes up sometimes. Okay, it's coming up. But you saw with the first time, nothing came up. And if nothing comes up, let's assume nothing came up now. What you do is to solve it as the workaround. My workaround is to do it again. Yeah. Oh, two, five, three. Oh, and what I hate is when I'm trying to edit this, you start updating it. You save. The page save is, saves goes cloudy when I'm in the middle of typing. It hasn't happened yet. Duh. So let's try another one. What well, is it? 02530. Look what happened. 02530. It's gone. But why is it finding this stuff? Why is it finding this stuff? And not 02530. Where's 02530? Where is 02530? Oh, it's because I added it. Sorry. Sorry. That's my mistake. But sometimes it's that's exactly the effect you get. It's added here. That's why you can't find it. Yeah. But um, that really does happen. And to show you it properly, I would have to probably go through about eight or ten products. Yeah. Of uh, trying to add active products that are not sold out. And then not eight, maybe... Two out of every ten, or three out of every ten. Oh, three, nine, one, three. Let's try that one, see if it does it for us. Three, nine, one, three, was it? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. Get off. No, I hate that F12. Three, nine, one, three. It's doing it. Because I'm showing you. It always does that when you're trying to show somebody something. But uh, as you saw when I searched for this one, other products came up on top. And the product I was searching for was on the bottom. Why is more than one product coming up when I give an SKU number? Yeah. And uh, sometimes the product is just not showing at all. It just won't show at all. And uh, at best, uh, sometimes you this will be at the bottom with 10 products that do not have this SKU number being shown above it as we saw when I searched for this one so your search here is absolutely terrible and lastly if I use this random products from catalog feature it does not remove out of stock products it should have a feature to remove out of stock products because what's the point in saying you might also like yeah this shop will do it good because this has a hell of a lot of out of stock products so let's go here this is a different equid store so does this one actually i mean look they're all out of stock you may also like, this is good enough already. So you may also like, I put 36 products, I believe, in the bottom. This one's an ebook, so it's always in stock. As for everything else that the widget, the you may also like random products widget is showing, are all sold out, except for this, 
this, this, this, and this. So it's showing like 90, 80%, 90% out-of-stock products in the you may also like. Now, how am I going to sell something that's out of stock? This is an upsell, basically. It's an upsell widget, and it worked very well when I still had a lot of stock. But as soon as most of my collector's items, like from 4,000 plus products, yeah, 3,000 of them are gone, or 3,500 of them are sold already. I can't make them invisible because they've been indexed by Google. Yeah? So that'll get me a red card if I get loads of PHP 404s, this page not found. Yeah? When people click. And secondly, I want to recommend things in stock to people without having to manually add with this terrible search dialogue that does not show what I really want. And sometimes just not sometimes just does not show the item I'm seeking, even di direct SKU. I have to then use the full title of the product to search with, and even then sometimes cannot find it. So this search from the database using SKU numbers is bullshit, because sometimes it displays other products and doesn't display the product with that SKU. You could try it in this store, spend an hour trying to do it, like I have. I mean, this took me about an hour to just add these products. I should be able to um, click on 50 or 10 or 6 or 5 or 30 or 15, depending on how slow you want the page to be. Um, random products from catalog from my chosen category, relevant category to the product I'm posting. And that it should show however many random products in stock. But you should have a thing here. Do not, a thing to click here saying uh, hide out of stock products in this. Because I can't hide out of stock products here. In my blog, in my, in my website. Yeah? Because if I do, every blog I inserted that product's buy now button into it's going to look messed up isn't it and every blog i posted with that product inserted around the web is going to have a blank image or sold out or missing missing image missing because if i deactivate it disable it then this embedded product what is that? And also, this is horrible. Want to leave this page? Of course I do. I haven't done anything. Why am I saving? Why is the save coming? I don't want to save. But I can change tabs without saving. I don't want to save. I don't want to save. But okay, save it. Deeper five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I'm going to die before my shop loads. 22, 23, 24 seconds. 24 seconds. 24 seconds to save that. Oh my God. Just because... I added two more related products. And that took about eight seconds to load as well. You are so slow. So let's go to conclusion. This search module is shit. Takes me an hour to add in stock products because this random products widget module feature whatever you want to call it is also shit because it only shows out of stock products and it doesn't remove them so what's the point in displaying you may also like these products but we're out of stock it just actually chases people away from your website so this should be only show in stock products not out of stock
instead of telling us to, if you don't want that to happen, we don't want to add a few lines of code to this widget code we've invented of random products from catalog. We would rather you deactivate all of your out of stock products so that uh, all of the index pages that Google has indexed turn into PHP 404 page not found and you get uh, demoted in your Google ranking because we are too lazy at Equid to program this widget here, the random products widget, to add one more little button here to say, do not display out of stock products or hide out of stock products. Or you didn't think of it yet because nobody showed you the scenario. Well, here's the scenario. Look at that. If you just use the may also like, and people are not selling t-shirts that are always in stock, they're selling antiques or their own artworks, one by one by one by one by one, and they have 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 items in store, but only one of each. So as soon as it sells, it's sold out. So I might have 1,000 item left and 4,000 items thrown out, uh, sold out. What I want is, if I want to show 24 products here, I would like them to be 24 in stock products, not 24 out of stock products. So now I'm spending an hour because your widget and functionality can't do that or you haven't thought of it because you're mostly millennials and you don't have that experience to have the foresight. You just have a PhD or a master's degree or a, or a, a bachelor's degree in full stack programming or whatever. But if we look at what the hell is going on here? Why is that the top? That's page two, sorry. If we look at uh, my latest products, what I've started adding manually, and this took me an hour, as I said, we can see you may also like This is why I don't deactivate my products and hide my out of stock products. Because look, tells you all the information. It's a blog post. It's got pictures and info for people to study and sucks and uh, and it also has deep links in it. Yeah? Has links to other websites, which helps my SEO. Or should do. Obviously isn't using Equid. Um, and also I get views for my YouTube videos that I insert, which is a problem inserting to Equid, but I'll explain that another day. And then these are manually added. Yeah. This was manually added. It was sold out before I added it, actually. So these are manually added. That looks much nicer, doesn't it? You may also like, and it's available. I can sell them. And since I've been doing this, my sales have increased manyfold because I have in stock products that you may also like. And there's the 50 from the widget, which I will remove shortly because I don't want to show it. This is what your widget shows. A bit of luck. We got one in stock product or one, six, seven, two. I'll show that the rest are all out of stock. As you can see, now what's the point in me showing 20 out of stock products that they may also like because these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36 products. These to here, I've all added one by one manually. Yeah. This is from the widget itself, all out of stock except for one. So that's not good for upselling. The widget is only good if everything's in stock and therefore not everybody's sales scenario is like that. Sometimes you only have limited editions and limited series or just one of each. You're selling antiques or handmade jewelry or whatever. Yeah, You're selling uh, original items, but you want to recommend other original items using this. You may also like feature, which works very well when the items are in stock to upsell. Yeah, what they call an upsell. But not if it looks like this, mate. 
And that's what it looks like if I don't do it manually one by one. And manually one by one, I need to sit writing down the SKU number of each one I can find in stock that's relevant on a piece of paper. Yeah. Then come here and start putting them in as SKU numbers. So I would now want to add this one, which is in stock. 01672. 01672. Oops, I clicked it, nothing happened. Oh, one, six, seven, two. You with your JavaScript cursor focus, stealing my cursor focus, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Even more than 22, even more than 23, even more than 25, even more than 27, even more than 30. Even more than 33, even more than 35. 35 seconds or more to load that. All I can say is you ducking bunch of incapable programmers because you cannot, and I'm move, remove the 50 products because they're out of stock anyway. And it's all manual, huh? all manual. And I'd like to sell that, actually. I'm going to change the price on that. Anyway, do that later. And that's it. Just to show you that you're, you may also like widget is rubbish because it shows out of stock products more than it shows in stock ones. Finding them manually like I have done with these ones here. Yeah. Is also... I'm doing it, but it's putting an hour of work onto my every product I add. Whereas it should be a mouse click of show 15 products from this category. Click, save, end of story. It should be a one minute, half minute operation. It's turned into a one hour operation for me. Just because if I do it automatically with the widget, this is what happens. Sold out, sold out, sold out, sold out, sold out, sold out, sold out. And I have plenty of in-stock products. It's just that your widget cannot find it. The you may also like, huh? Or, as you call it here, random products, yeah? Show random product, related products. Oh, random products, related products, you may also like. Can you decide what you're going to call it? The you may also like section or the related products. Doesn't it say here, related products? Because actually, you may also like, is quite condescending and patronizing. But, oh, you may also like this if you want. Stop trying to push shit on me, dude. I hate shopkeepers who say, you may also like. Whoever said that that phrase works was in 1998, and it did. But it is kind of stuck as a belief. <laughs> anyway, uh... The human mind and perception is easily manipulated, so maybe it does work on some people. It doesn't on me. So, in stock products, please, as a request, that the show random products, your related products, the widget shows only in stock, that you can switch off out of stock products without having to switch off out of stock products from the storefront, because that will de-index the pages from Google and give you lots of 404s and get you demoted in Google search, right? Secondly, please, please make it load a bit faster because, to be quite honest, I've speeded it up as much as I can, yeah, to the store, to the, uh, uh, the store. My website and blog loads in less than two seconds, as you can see it's loaded. Equid's still loading. That horrible graphic here. That's just one extra piece of baggage for the browser to load, you idiots. Sorry, I didn't mean that. You're not idiots. But, you know, when you know something and somebody else doesn't, you think they're an idiot. But it's actually stupid. We're all idiots in a way. And we're all very clever in a way. So I'm sorry for that. I didn't mean to call you idiots. You're not idiots. If you were idiots, you wouldn't have been able to create this product in the first place. You're actually geniuses with lack of foresight. You're very good devs. But unfortunately, I believe you're all very young. 
uh, who are on the programming end, the development end, and you're not seeing most. In fact, none of you have an online shop with Equid because if any of you devs did, you'd see these problems yourself and solve them. And that's why I say every dev who's working on Equid should actually have their own Equid store. Right? They should get one for free from Equid while they're working there. That'll stop them running away as well. Because if not, they can do their own. And if Equid is so good for making money online, how come none of your own people have their own online shop? Hmm? It is really good for selling stuff. I make a lot of money with my four or five shops. I'm making up to $20,000 a month. Not all through Equid. I make some sales personally through chats. But the Equid does sell very well. So how come all of you don't have your own shops? Why don't all of you do online commerce if it's so good? And all the techniques you teach, why don't you, the, the people who blog teaching techniques how to succeed with your website and Equid, none of them have their own online shops. Is it? You don't have your own experience with your own online shop. Who the duck are you to tell me advice? You're not a pundit. You're just writing something that you've researched on the internet and use Writer and uh, GPT-3 to help you format and write a blog post about the 10 best ways to market your products on Facebook so that people looking for the 10 best ways to market their products find you in Google so that the Equid blog gets more traffic. Excuse me, the Equid blog is actually supposed to be full of truthful, helpful tips. Not paid placements from your app affiliates telling us that it's really good to add your products to the Google shopping feed. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Putting your products in Facebook marketplace feed, adding to Facebook your sh product feed and to Google, to Facebook for sure, is letting them spy on every business transaction, every product, what sells well in the world, how Equid do it, so that they can steal it from you and make their own e-commerce product like Equid or Shopify, and instead of still allow people to insert their Equid and Shopify into Facebook, but they won't push it, they won't make it visible unless people pay to advertise with Facebook, and what they will do is they will they are doing, inventing and preparing to implement their own e-commerce solution with their own payment gateway because they don't need PayPal or what Western Union or whatever, uh, Crypto 88 or whatever, yeah? And they can add it, the banks of every country, of every user in Facebook with their profiles and stuff. More believable, you can see the profile of the shop owner and blah, blah. As soon as they have buy now buttons instead of chat with the seller to buy in the Facebook marketplace, as soon as Facebook marketplace becomes real online shops with buy buttons, weights, sending prices and so on, then Facebook is going to put you all out of business. So... Connecting to Amazon, affiliating with Amazon, Facebook, and Google Shopping, the big boys. Google is search engine as well. Uh, it's firstly uh, letting them steal exactly how each of your customers operates and how the Equid product itself operates, what features it has. Let them know how much money is to be made with its user base. And uh, Facebook will say, oh, we'll have that. That's why they let Shopify and Equid and Big Commerce and whatever you want to call them, all of the different solutions, add themselves as a product feed to Facebook. It's like letting them spy on Equid so that they can put Equid.com, Equid Inc. out of business and take your customers from you. Yeah. They won't take mine because I can't export the 4,000 products I've got and import them into something else because your product feed doesn't work in Google Shopping anyway in my shop. If you have one item where it has a zero price, such as an ebook for free ebook, I have free ebooks, so it's zero price, that already causes a fail with uh, the Google product feed upload. One single product with price at zero because it's free, 
and it's a download, makes the whole product feed fail. Yeah. And also the attributes here, the attributes, because, whoops, what happened there? Uh, the attributes here, let's just go to, we can't go to the attributes page anymore. Where's the attributes page called? Oh, manage attributes. It's really hard to navigate as well because you keep moving things around. Get that out of my face. Stop this pop out. Once it pops out, it won't go back unless I re-hover. UPC. I use as maker. Because my products don't have a UPC. <laughs> so I just use that. Yeah. Brand. It was Temple of Origin. Because it doesn't have a brand. And the, the what brand? The temple. It's just have a brand. It's not a Mitsubishi, yeah? These are not Mitsubishi or T-shirt, Nike shoes. These are collector's items. And so Equid makes the assumption that everybody's selling T-shirts, Louis Vuitton bags, and mainstream products. Whereas Equid, if you're selling mainstream products, you're probably better with Wix or Shopify or Big Commerce and the rest of them who are much bigger and more developed than this. Uh, Equid should be more for niche. Was intended for niche topic uh, e-commerce. People doing their own jewellery and stuff like Etsy is a niche. Now it's been taken over by Lightspeed, which is point of sale, which means brick and mortar businesses, which unfortunately, actually, that's very strange because people are moving out of the cities and working from home and working online and getting their food from Food Panda. I don't know how many brick and mortar businesses you really think are going to still exist 10 years from now. But I would say light speed with your POS point of sale. I should say it will still work with people driving around and using their phone and selling from their car or delivering something and point of sale works like that. Yeah, I don't think point of sale means a brick and mortar shop I'm paying rent for because I'm sat at home and these shops don't have a physical storefront. I've got seven online shops actually. And none of them have a physical storefront. I am a retired in Thailand, English person. And I take my money through PayPal America. And I uh, have a .com and .net websites which are based in America. So I'm not taxable and I don't need a shop. Yeah, I don't pay a penny tax. So there you go. Uh, these, can, these are useless to me to upload. And if you don't have a brand and UPC, you can't upload your product feed to absolutely anywhere. Especially not Google. So uh, I don't know if other people have managed to do it, but I don't know any Equid user who has managed to add their product feed to Google. I'm sure there are. Somebody who's got five T-shirts or ten pairs of Nike shoes or something. I don't know. So there you go. Takes so long to load. Go to my dashboard. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three. Do you believe this? I'm on. 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, shall I click it? 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, it's not loading. It's more than a minute now. So while that's loading, let's go here. Has it loaded yet? No. So while we're loading, we're coming up to one and a half minutes now. While we're loading, actually we do have a slow internet connection. Or, I'm going to change my network. It might be just, okay, let's do it. Speed. And has Equid loaded as well? No. Nope. Still not loading. 
So it was a slow internet connection, but it's still not loading. It's probably never going to load now. So let's just do a... Check my internet speed from the office. So probably not up to 600 maybe. But that's already, that's already a decent speed. We're only on 300, okay. It's slow today. The internet's slow today. I sometimes I get up to uh, 300, e even 500 megabytes upload speed. So it's slow. Yeah, 277. Equid's still loading. Let's refresh the page. Two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine. So almost thirty seconds, yeah. And what have you got here? Lifetime or last thirty days. There used to be a calendar there which would actually appear in sales, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight. Do you think I want to wait twenty eight seconds to look at my orders? Huh? And why is that? Because one, two, three, four, it's showing. You're displaying, and this is another thing you've removed, in breach of terms of service from my sign-up, my sign-up terms, that you would not remove any feature that was already in existence for early adopters, for life, for life, and you've removed it. Huh? So I'll share this with my lawyer as well and ask his opinion, my American lawyer. And you've also, you've removed at least two or three features that were there. The other feature you removed is this one. It is showing one of 70 pages and it's showing one of a hundred orders here. You see? One of a hundred, hundred of 6,984 orders. Yeah? Total sales, 885,000. Yeah? Which is wrong because I hit a million dollars about three years ago and the stats have changed since then. So Egwit's stats are completely inaccurate as well. Because you also don't know what kind of sales I've made through this shop through people asking me through line and I did a manual Western Union. But you can't know that. You can only know the online. But even that's inaccurate because I've definitely already sold a million dollars through this shop. I reached it. I celebrated it couple of years ago because I remember as the stat showed me on the dashboard the old dashboard so here we have 100 products displayed so what if I want to display five products I wrote to you about this and you said oh uh, the early adopter doesn't have this feature or something oh we understand you are showing 100 products and you want to show less uh, we will be in touch that was about six months ago it's taking 30 seconds to load this page because I cannot change it to show 20 products or 10 or 100. If I'm making 100 odd sales a day, I want to see 100, of course. But if I'm only making five sales every three days, I only want to see 10, don't I? And I want to be able to do that manually, but I can't. You have deliberately put it to show 100 orders to deliberately make my early adopter CP slow yeah and also in catalog you've done it on the products show 100 products yeah and when you removed it I had a hundred products showing so you removed the show how many products per page feature where is it you know products per page Products per page. You've removed the products per page. Yeah? So what's it doing? It's showing me 100 products. Wow. Per page. 
showing 1 to 100 of 4,718 products, yeah? So why can't I show 1 to 10? Hmm? Is this how Equid treats its customers? You force us to see 100 products? You can't even have a measly little widget here, a little feature here, and you had it. You could change it before. You could. It was somewhere here, I believe, somewhere up the top and at the bottom, that you could show how you could decide how many products you can show. 10, 20, 50, 100 per page. Yeah? And this is set to 100 per page forever, which means 30 to 50 seconds to load the page on dashboard, sales, and catalog. Now, that's what you call deliberately making somebody's life hard to make them pay for an upgrade but I'm never going to pay for an upgrade because $17 a month compared to $99 a month isn't worth it for what I get. I've already paid one year of a $99 a month uh, unlimited account. I paid the whole year. I used it for about two weeks to see what it was like. And I said, I don't want to keep this. I'm not adding products to this because all it has is like, Two more features than my $17 a month um, early adopter account, which I have, because it's one of the first people to sign up with Equid. It didn't have half the features. It didn't have even a tenth of the features it has now. And they promised they would always update for life and add features to it until it was fully featured and continue adding features. And you do. You still add features here like TikTok. All of these you've added. Yeah. Adding stuff uh, was in the deal, promised. How much stuff gets added? Yeah. Well, that's debatable, isn't it? That I don't get every feature, such as the SEO feature, which I don't want anyway because you don't have a clue about SEO. I really laugh. I'm very sorry. I don't wish to be condescending. But this piece of crap here, I'm sorry, upgrade to enhance SEO <laughs> with your page titles. That's not going to get anybody on my website or my SEO, do anything with my SEO, except put a double header in for Google and get me. You have no idea of what real SEO is. You don't know how Google DeepMind works, and you definitely don't know how good SEO works. I've been doing SEO for 28 years before the word SEO was invented. And I've been watching how search engines think and testing how they think using tools and just intuition and manual searches to see what happens, which is, for example, how I know that my products on thailandamulet.net in store number 173011 yeah, come up in Google on the thailand com and the lersi, l e r s i dot net websites in Google higher and before the actual website of thailandamulet.net. So, Equid's SEO is bullshit. It doesn't have a clue about SEO and the only good SEO is on the subdomain or the mobile site as you like to call it the free site yeah which is I believe here I don't know where it is anymore I really don't know where it is is it in settings who knows where you put it anymore the free site where is it but anyway the subdomain dot equid dot com hmm so, I'm sorry, but it's all just too slow to load, yeah? This didn't take time to load. Why? Because you've saved this whole page on my bloody temp files in my browser, haven't you? And if I'm... I'll, I'll sign off with this, because I'm going to upload this to YouTube. Like, should I use Equid or not? And say, well, listen to my complaints. They're just a few of many. Decide for yourselves, yeah? What is this, Jesus?
that sometimes when I am editing, let's say I'm here writing away, I'm here writing away, blah, blah, and I'm halfway through a blah, and all of a sudden it auto saves. And it takes away what I was writing when it's saving. And I didn't press save. I did ask Equid to do an auto save, like WordPress does, but background, not while you're working. It should auto save in the background. It shouldn't stop you from working while it's saving. So if I'm writing here like this, and auto save happens, all of a sudden my work gets disappears or I get interrupted. What I'm typing doesn't get typed. So that's horrible. Look at this popping out. Unless I go back over, it doesn't, you know, go this pop, 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 pop. Where is it? Now the pop ups don't come at all. No. You go over here sometime. When I go, I'm editing here, I go over there accidentally. All of a sudden, this is popping out, blocking my blog post, and it stays there. It really does. Absolutely disgusting. You don't check if your product works well in browsers or anything. Yeah. Takes bloody ages to load. Your SEO, that's a load of rubbish. You don't have a clue. There's, you've already put, tried to improve your SEO and your URLs. They're still ugly as hell. Anyway, I find that really mean of you that you refuse and you've deliberately removed a feature I had, which was promised never to be removed as an early adopter to help Equid succeed because they didn't have any people signing up. They offered the early adopters $17 a month for life. If you adopt, because if you join now, because they couldn't get anybody to join. Why? Because all of these features weren't there yet. Attributes wasn't there yet. Related products wasn't there yet. Yeah. Uh, shipping was still being programmed. There was definitely no SEO. Yeah. There was no, there was the buy now button, flat options and general. Yeah. Then there was files and attributes added and yeah. And everything came one after the other. But the early adopters, yeah. If I'd added 2,000 products by the time they implemented a new feature in Equid, I had to go back manually and add that feature. For example, options. Yeah? I had to add my casing options. That should say encasement options, by the way. En Not with a six. That's what I call it these days. To do the options, yeah? And so if you if I was an early adopter and we didn't have options yet as a feature, as soon as the feature was implemented, I got already been half a year at it, adding products, have to go to every product and add this feature to the product manually, which took weeks and weeks, yeah? And every time a new feature came, weeks and weeks again, adding manually. Now I've got 2,000 products. Now I've got 3,000. Oh my God, I need to pay somebody to sit there all day adding this, adding the related products to the bottom of every product I already posted over the last three years because it took them about three years to add this related products thing, for example. And that's why early adopters deserve the $17 a month price. Because we put up with a featureless interface for about the first two years to three years of development of Equid. Yeah. We put up with a bare bones interface, CP, and very much less functionality than even the free WooCommerce for WordPress. Yeah. And we put up with that at $17 a month. And if it hadn't have been for us, yeah, you wouldn't have been able to get kickstarted. Yeah, Equid would not have been able to get kickstarted. So just in case you at Lightspeed do not know this, it is me and the other early adopters who empowered you to have an existence without drowning. Because nobody was going to sign up with a half-baked product that wasn't ready yet. And you couldn't finish the product without some sign-up because you ran out of money. Which is why you were 
It's the only product I've ever seen. Take an early adopter like that with a half-baked product and promise $17 for life. And I thought, well, that's okay. I'll put up with the disadvantages of having to add things to my products one by one later manually because I know this is going to be expensive later. So I'll take the early adopter. But there was a promise to not remove features that were already there and to add until it became fully featured to a, bear, to a good minimum. In fact, there was not really a limit mentioned, but that features would be added to be fully featured. But we had to wait. And that's why it's 17, not 99 or 89 as you've dropped the price now. So there you go. That's why you should not be removing the uh, display 20 products per page instead of 100. Look, look how long it's taking my products page to load. Yeah, And that's already with temp files in my temp files on my computer. It still took eight seconds to load. Yeah, The first time I did it, it took God knows how long to load. Let's try the dashboard again. Before I go, well, that's saved now, yeah? Sales. That's saved now. So let's reload. Let's reload. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six. 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. 31 seconds to load my orders. Dudes, you removed something illegally, according to terms of service as an early adopter sign up, that here I can change how many products per page I can see. The same goes for the catalog, products page. Nah. Same goes for the products page. Now, I don't want to be waiting for 100 products to load for 30 to 50 seconds every time I check my orders and my product products. So please, re-put that back. Because you've taken it out. It was there. And you're not allowed to take it out. Because I'm an early adopter. And there is a terms of service for the early adopter. And when you bought Equid at Lightspeed, you bought into that as well. And if not, then you can argue that with my lawyer in court if you want because it's causing me a lot of difficulty and if you argue with my lawyer in court i'm going to tell my lawyer that he should uh make equid pay for my legal costs as well yeah and i'll make sure that he's a very expensive lawyer so that he bangs you with some really really high legal costs and that uh, equid should be fined for this breach of terms of service and uh, unethical behavior because you're deliberately trying to push push me into upgrading by deliberately removing how many products per page I can look at and setting it to a hundred so that it takes as long as possible to load to frustrate me into upgrading paying 99 for the same thing I'm getting for 17 because the 99 dollars it doesn't even have a newsletter. You still have to pay MailChimp for newsletters. It's external. It doesn't have uh, a generic newsletter feature. So for $89 or $99 a month, I'm sorry, Equid, but if you don't have your own, you're still hoping for people to pay monthly subscriptions to be able to email all of their customers in their shop with an emergency update using MailChimp, yeah, for $30 a month, when I'm paying $17 a month for my online shop, why should I pay $30 a month just for the newsletter feature? Like the whole Equid e-commerce product here, I get for $17 a month. But if I want to use the plugins, where is it? Where is it? Your apps, your app market is disgusting. They're all unethical. They're all overpriced. If I want to use these, look at twenty dollars a month, <laughs> twenty nine a month. Jesus, 
I'm on $50 a month just with Codisto Amazon. Here's another $20 a month drop shipping, which nobody ever makes any money with anyway. No, mate, I'm not turning my equid into a $1,000 a month plug-in thing. I'll stick with my $17 a month. Thank you very much. Huh? I'll stick with my $17 a month. Here, staff, why have you put that there? I can't do staff accounts. Trying to, it's an upsell. You're trying to get me to upgrade to business. Well, if you look what I've got, I've got unlimited categories, unlimited products. If I upgrade to business, I will then have more products than I'm allowed and more categories than I'm allowed. Because I already have more categories and more products than the business account allows. So how's that an upgrade? Pay more for less or what? I'm an early adopter. I'm an early adopter. I'm an early adopter. I'm an early adopter, yeah? Facebook? I am not. I do not want my link. Unlink my fucking Facebook account. Fuck off. I do not sign in with Facebook. I never have done. Who did that, you twat? can't use the email. I have different emails. You can't use the same email for multiple shop. Change your account password. So where is this, uh, my account? How do I see my account? Billing and plans. Seventeen a month. VAT waived. I could pay yearly before, and now you say you can't. You keep changing the rules that are unchangeable through the sign-up terms of service of an, of an early adopter. So you want me to upgrade to business from 17 to 35, where I can have 20,000 products. Well, I'm sorry, because with my silver plan, yeah? Listen. Therefore eligible to subscribe to special early adopters plans that provide all features your store already possessed and in offer increased number of product listings at the same price, yeah? Provide all features your store already possessed, yeah? And my store did possess products per page and orders per page. And now you're showing me 100 products loading in 50 seconds and 100 orders loading in 50 seconds. You've taken out something of a feature that was already possessed in the silver plan and you've removed it. So you are in breach of terms of service, yeah? And you want me to upgrade to staff accounts from 17 a month with unlimited products you want me to be able to have staff accounts to upgrade to business, yeah? Which would, of course, then only give me 20,000 products. And how many, how, how many categories? Doesn't say, huh? Doesn't say, huh? Paid annually, paid annually, paid annually. Lately, I asked you to pay uh, to pay annually, and you said no. This is only monthly. But that's funny because the terms of service, which my store already possessed when I signed up as an early adopter, because I created my account before new plans were introduced, and I'm therefore eligible to this early adopter. Yeah, which is seventeen a month. Yeah, and it has unlimited products. Not 20,000, unlimited. So why should I upgrade to pay double what I'm paying? Huh? Just to have less than 100 products per page? And less than 100 sales per page? No, you have taken that out deliberately. And it was already there. I already possessed it in my store. Yeah? And when I signed up, I was straight a silver plan anyway. I made the free store, and then I upgraded to silver, which was the plan for early adopters. It was called early adopter, and then it was changed to silver. Yeah? After which, you changed it to venture, business, and unlimited. You keep changing. But you can't get rid of me 
and you are legally bound. So I would say you either get that back in there now, and I'm talking seriously, it's not a threat, it's a promise. You get that back in to paginate less than 100 products, to be able to control how many products per page I can see, and how many sales per page I can see. And apart from that, then... A suggestion. So the others are demands because you are in legal breach of terms of service of my sign up as an early adopter with a silver account. I have a silver account and the silver account had the feature to change how many products per page I was looking at. Okay? So you put it back or be sued. Over a tiny little thing like that in one interface of early adopters, you either put that back for all other early adopters because I'm going to call this uh, Early Adopters Equid Bullshit or something like that. I'll upload it twice under two different titles. So the Early Adopters find it and people, should I use Equid, find it. Because it just shows you the dodginess and the unethical attitude and the sneakiness behavior of Lightspeed by removing features and deliberately setting things to 100 products a page so that the person using the interface, the, the product feels frustrated to upgrade from unlimited products to 20,000. So from infinity products, I now pay double and I can only put 20,000. How is that an upgrade? And now I am going to say it. How is upgrading from $17 a month to $35 a month to have less products that I'm allowed to be allowed less products than before how on earth is that an upgrade you idiots give me less for twice the price how is that an upgrade you idiots so basically equid has been taken over by lightspeed who are specialists in point of sales which means physical businesses which means they're very 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 inexperienced with online only which is what most of us are who use equid except in america equid is marketed to marketed to people with a physical business then in america they know when you fart when you shit and god knows what yeah oh no i've got a messed up they know fart when you shit and god knows what they really do so there you go equid bullshit the related products, you can improve this by not showing out of stock products. Look how long this takes to load. You know, you just change tabs in a product when you're editing a product with Equid. Should I use Equid? No, you should not. Because one day it will actually go bankrupt and disappear and I'm going to have to rethink everything on that day because it looks like they're not going to survive. So what Equid can do is this random products from catalog, make sure it excludes all out of stock products. If not, it's a senseless widget that does not help to sell if you have a lot of out of stock products. And don't say hide them from the storefront because that causes page not found in Google. So shut up with that. You should That feature, you have it there for people who like it to not display out of stock products. Makes the storefront look cleaner. Actually, it makes people rush less because if you have a few out-of-stock products, it makes people think, oh, I better hurry up and buy it before somebody else does. So having a few out-of-stock products is always good to cause people to rush. Speaking like you people with the upsell. Uh, like you're trying to upsell me to upgrade from unlimited products to limited products and pay twice as much to take my unlimited product account and limit it to 2,000 products. You must be nuts. I'm not crazy. How am I going to upgrade if I get less with the upgrade than what I had with my early adopter account? You want me to upgrade, you're going to have to offer me something that has more than my early adopter account. Yeah, And $17.99, just so I can have... 20 products and load my page fast instead of 100. Now, I'll put up with your evil deliberately hassle me so I have to wait for 100 orders 
to load. Yeah. For 60 seconds. Yeah. And I'll open two tabs, one with orders and one with pages. So I'll just go there and I go there and I open it in a new tab. And then I, every, I won't have to keep changing pages. I'll just change tabs. Yeah. Rather than pay you 99 fucking dollars when I'm paying 17, just because you deliberately done this as a trick, as a scam, so that when I go, my God, how, where is the bit to change to show only 20 sales per page? Showing one of 100, 6,984 orders. I'm surprised you didn't put all 6,984 on one page, like the never ending parallax scrolling. Then you'd be really hassling me. Or slow load. Why don't you do that? Just put all orders on one page for everybody, even the business account and the unlimited. Yeah? Parallax scrolling, then it'll take them forever to load. Or why don't you use lazy loading if you want to show 100 products per page? Or even better, just be fair and put back what was already there so they could show 5, 10, 15 orders per page or products per page and let the page load fast. Just like you tell people, don't put too many products on your first page because it'll take longer to load. I used to have 1, 2, 3... Four, five, I used to have 12 to 18 rows and it took ages to load. And after the last Google search update, of course I had to reduce the amount of thumbnails and products to load on the first page. Fortunately, my whole blog here, this loads in less than two seconds, this blog page and the top, the header and writing here. And let's just refresh to show you. There. Blog's loaded, but the shop, let's do it again. So there's the shop loading. The blog's loaded. The blog is now faster than it was before. It's still taking five seconds, which is three seconds over Google's limit for a good performing page. This is taking five seconds uh, at a speed of... But it's not just my internet speed, it's the speed of Equid's server. People think internet speed is important. You can have five, if I've got 2,000 megabytes a second, but the Equid server is slow as hell, it's still not going to load the page fast. Which is why your pages aren't loading fast. Because your servers are slow, not my internet, right? I'm, I'm slow today, I should be on 600. It's on 209. I'm not wired, I'm wireless, and I'm, I'm, I'm in very far from the router in the moment. But with 209 megabytes a second, yeah, and 20 megabytes a second upload, which it isn't, it's very slow. If I go in the kitchen, it's 600 megabytes and about 170 megabytes upload. Yeah? That uh, this should not... Uh, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty six seconds to load the orders page at a speed of two hundred and nine megabytes a second. So that means 209 times 20, 209 times 10 is, you're down, is it five gigabytes? You're telling me that it's five gigabytes to load this page? Because at 200 megabytes a second, and the amount of seconds it took to load this, I could have loaded five gigabytes. Look, it's doing that pop out again. Could have loaded five gigabytes of data. Huh? So why is it taking 30 seconds? Because your server is so slow that it is, as they say in German, for an ash. Or as they say in Spanish, una puta mierda, tío. A puto server. 
the Equid. It's una puta mierda. That the Equid server is a pile of bullshit. Because I've got 200 minimum. I've got 209 megabytes a second download speed. And I'm slow today. It still takes that when I'm on 500. It takes the same time when I'm on 600 megabytes a second. Why? Because it's not my internet speed slowing it down. It's the Equid server. And the fact that you put 100 products in here. And 100 orders. And that I can't lower it to view 10 orders per page. Which would load it a bit faster. Even with your slow server. Because the thing that's slowing it down is not my internet speed. It's your server. And the fact that you're showing too many products on my sales and products pages. 100 per page. Jesus Christ. I only do that if I want to see how much I've sold in the last three months or something. I don't sell that much. I used to sell 100 orders a month. Now I'm only doing about 20 or something in each shop. So please fix that. And if I don't see that fixed within two weeks after publishing this on YouTube, then uh, I'm sorry, but you'll be receiving a summons to court. Believe it or not, because if you look how many shops I own, how much I earn, you'll realize that I can very easily afford a lawyer to sue you with. And I've threatened it many times, but I've had enough now. Because you're removing things illegally, features that were given to me in my account as an early adopter. So there you go. You put them back and you make this possible to show less than 100 products and 100 orders. Orders. Change the amount. I, uh, I'm manually able to change tool. To change the amount of orders. Calendar. For view orders between this date and this date. You removed it. Yeah. Viewing all orders. That's all you've got there. You have removed something. That you're not allowed to remove. Legally according to my sign up. As a. Silver Early Adopter. Yeah? The Silver Early Adopter account had that feature to change the dates, a, 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 a custom date range of orders. And with the catalog, look at that. Horrible pop-out won't go away unless I float back over it again. Blocking my editing of a product all the time because you kids can design well, program well, but you have no idea about the end user because none of you are yourselves an end user. Any product I've ever made, I always use it myself, yeah? Before I deploy it. Yeah? Any app I would ever make, I would use it myself to find the bugs before I deploy it. You don't, you just deploy it. You don't even look at the front end after you've designed it. So you put that back here. You put that back here, that show, change here, how many products, there should be a widget here, a drop down to show 10, 20, 50, 100. It used to be there. 5, 10, 20, 50, 100 products per page. You put it back because you were in br illegal breach of terms of service, I'm afraid. Or I'll sue you, I will. I will this time. I've threatened many times and didn't do it. I will this time. Because I'm sick of waiting for this to load. And I'm sick of you thinking you can get away with it. It's time to teach corporations a lesson. And I'm one of the people who can afford to do it. So, yeah. And I'll get my money back through my lawyer. Because I'll hire a lawyer who's going to get the money back. Because in America you can get the money back. Yeah. So you're going to pay for my lawyer as well. When you lose, because you will. Because we have the evidence. I kept the evidence of my sign up. It was early adopter silver. I've got it. I have screenshots of what features were there during the early adopter phase. I even have screencasts, in fact, which I sent to Equid at that time as feedback. So that feature is definitely there. I have evidence that it was there. The fact that it's not there now is evidence that you've removed it illegally according to the terms of service of silver early adopters. So, you know how much they fine you when you get sued in American court of law. If you don't want me to claim something like millions, then I would put this feature back in because it's probably cheaper for you 
to put the feature back in <clears throat> and make me happy with you instead of pissed off with you than for me to sue you. But this is going on YouTube anyway. I say to anybody, please, Eggwid, I prefer it as a product, but I don't see a future in it, and it is deprecating because the people who are controlling it are too pragmatic and they don't have any ethics. And they're removing things that were features included in my terms of service and they're removing it to try to upsell. It is unethical corporate behavior and there are various legal charges you can be brought under under this. I don't think you are aware. You ask your legal team. I don't even think they're aware of how many different charges you can be charged for under this, what I'm talking about. Because there's very various uh, angles at which you're actually in breach. And we know how the Senate and the American government just love to find you because they make some money out of that as well. Anyway, you put it back because I'm pissed off with your slow load times, your deliberate 100 pages per product, 100 orders per product removed illegally from the early adopter silver account. And I'd like to post this on Equid on YouTube as well as should I use Equid? Well, no, you shouldn't because once you've got so many products in there, you're going to start noticing and regretting how they are unethically playing games with you because they do. They play games with their end users, just as you see here. They're playing games with me. They've removed a feature to try to make me to upgrade, pay double for half of what I have already. And they don't even realize that I'm never going to upgrade because all of the upgrades they have have less features. Well, they have other features I don't use, but do not have the features I need, which is unlimited categories and unlimited products. And the rest can go suck my baseball bat. Yeah. So, Egwid, you're being really evil by doing this. I'm one of I'm one of the people who made your product succeed in the first place. Without us, you would have never got off your feet with your half-baked product that wasn't ready yet and you already deployed it on the market and because you ran out of money. To get early adopters who were willing to take a half-baked product because $17 for life as a reward for taking a half-baked product. Yeah? And don't remove any of the features and add the full features as we're going along until Equid is a proper e-commerce product. Because it wasn't when I signed up. And now you're removing the features I was given all those years ago as one of the first sign-ups of Equid. And without those early adopters signing up for your half-baked product that wasn't ready yet and you'd run out of money, then you wouldn't have had any sign-ups at all. So you should actually be kissing our feet because it is the early adopters who actually gave you that extra bit of revenue so you could keep paying your devs to finish the job and get all of the features fully programmed. And that's going to be in the description of this video that why you shouldn't use Equid because of this. They deploy a half-baked product ask you to sign up cheap and put up with the missing features, add the features, comma, up, add the features, and then they sell themselves to Lightspeed and Lightspeed remove the features, realizing or not that they are in breach, legal breach of terms of service with the people who made them. Because the people who made you is not just the devs who created Equid, yeah, Dimitri and Matt and all the other people, yeah. It is the early adopters who paid the money to sign up for a product that was not ready yet. It was not ready yet. And it was missing features. And now, because you're pissed off that some people are still getting it for $17 and Lightspeed didn't make that decision, Equid did before Lightspeed took over and Lightspeed doesn't want it. Well, I'm sorry, you're going to have to put up with it, Lightspeed, because you bought that when you bought Equid. You bought the early, you took the early adopter silver accounts in with you as well. The whole package, the good and the bad. So accept the bad that you actually have to take only seventeen dollars for the first group of people who ever signed up with Equid. Because if it hadn't been for us, 
you wouldn't be sat in your CEO chair right now, okay? So bend over to me. I'm not bending over to you. I'll see you in court. And anybody watching this, use Shopify. It's going to last much more years. Use Wix. Use WooCommerce for free on my recommendation if you're a good enough webmaster to fiddle and diddle. But don't use Equid because they're really going down the drain ever since the takeover by Lightspeed. Actually, since COVID. And their small team couldn't do it. But the Equid people were great. It was a great attitude. A small team of people running it in a very friendly family fashion. Now Lightspeed have taken over. It's turned into a load of shit. The performance is shit. It takes 50 seconds to load your orders. 50 seconds to load your products. You're editing a product with a terrible, the worst product editor. Uh, what you see is what you get editor in the universe. Uh, when you're writing, sometimes the browser just auto saves and takes away the last three words you wrote or the last thing you programmed and all sorts of things. It's a chunky, clunky, bad SEO, can't be found in Google kind of thing. And uh, now... I think Equid, I'm very worried. I, I should actually be paying somebody to migrate all of my products to another solution because uh, this just isn't on. This kind of behavior, removing things and deliberately trying to make me scroll, wait 50 seconds for 100 products or orders to load, you assholes. When I was earlier able with my basic, not yet fully featured, not yet fully developed first year of existence of equid.com I could already change how many products per page I see so that feature existed 10 years ago more than 10 years ago huh and now you've taken it out well you're not allowed to do that because when I signed up it's in the terms of service that nothing will be removed that's already in existence and further features will be added until it's a fully complete featured e-commerce product and that only uh, luxury features for the top paid accounts won't be added to the silver uh, early adopter account but that most of the features would be added stuff like the the only thing that was not with early adopter was this yeah that's not early adopter have to upgrade if I want that. Well, it's not worth upgrading from $17 to $99 a month just to have that because I can make a blog post with that page title and meta description with a different page title and meta description to the one my product has on the shop. So I don't need a related, don't need to pay $99 a month. Yeah. For, uh, where was that? Where were we? Anyway, I don't need to pay 99 a month for that to upgrade because there's a cheap workaround. You just do a blogger on Blogspot and that's how you get your SEO. You don't get your SEO from here. Nah? I don't need that. To pay to upgrade from $17 a month to $99 a month for that, I don't need. And you realize that, so suddenly you just go to my products and take away the 20 products per page display. The, the manual show how many products per page. So it's 100 products. And look how long it takes to load. Count yourself. This is Equid loading. At 200 plus megabytes a second. Jesus, that was about 3 gigabytes, wasn't it? Is it 3 gigabytes, this products page? Terrible, huh? So there you go, it takes so long. It's a three gigabyte page or what? Why is it taking so long? Because your server, you're throttling the server. So Equid throttles the server of its end users. That'll be in the description as well, and title of my video. Absolutely horrible. You're throttling the servers of the end users. You're messing around with their CPs to try and make them pissed off an upgrade you're removing features that you are in breach of legal terms of service by removing them 
and are about to be sued unless you put them back. I bloody promise you. This is not a threat. It's a promise. I've already spoken with my lawyer and told him about this problem. He said he'd be happy to do it because that's the definite. They love to sue corporations. He said he's not much into suing people, individuals, but corporations. Uh, uh, he likes to sue corporations, my lawyer in America. Why? Because you get a lot of money recompensation, of course. So, beware. Or take me on if you want. I'll see you in court. Or I'll see this feature return to my products and my sales. That I can change how many products. And the other thing was a suggestion. Not a demand. Just feedback. Is that on the related products. On the related products. So I don't have to spend an hour finding in stock products and adding manually. And just for other people as well. Every user. That the random products from catalog feature shows only in stock products, not out of stock products. What's the point in showing out of stock products for God's sake? Huh? You may also like should never have out of stock products in it. So that's a suggestion that you have no logic in that feature because you have not separated in stock and out of stock products from the you may also like. Yes, I might also like this out-of-stock product just to piss you off because we don't have it anyway, even though you might also like it. If they also like it and I don't have it in stock, how can they buy it? So why not just show them things that are in stock that they can buy that they might also like? Huh? You think you're e-commerce people. No, you're not. You're devs who have created an e-commerce product and you're blogging about how to do e-commerce. But the thing is, you are devs. You know about coding and making an e-commerce product yeah and files that refer to each other in php and stuff like that but you know absolutely nothing about seo or e-commerce that's not your specialty so stop pretending on your blog and with this tab here because this tab here is ridiculous it's more likely to actually destroy your seo than improve it and i could talk for an hour about why and i could show you why I look at this and I just think this just proves how stupid these people are. But this is going to help the SEO when you're using the subdomain. Eh? When you're using the subdomain here to get your subdomain dot equid dot com above. Yeah? Look, I use Blogspot, you see? This is my blog. That's how I do my SEO, yeah? Here is where I do my SEOs in blog spots and my own blogs. Yeah? Because your Equid SEO is stealing my traffic from my .net and .com domains to your subdomain. Huh? Which still gets me stuff sold. Yeah, sure. That's the subdomain, right? I have to change that as well. I've changed my email here. I've changed my email. I've changed my email on this. So you see, it's coming up on your subdomain. The, the good SEO is coming from the subdomain, not from my WordPress site with the Equid widget inserted, which proves if you have a WordPress site and an Equid, and you take Equid, or you have your own website and you take the Equid widget and insert it into your website, Google's not going to pick up your products because it's crap SEO. And they're going to try and sell you an upgrade here to improve your SEO rankings. Yeah? whilst at the same time stabbing you in the back by using their own subdomain here to rank above you and your own website with the same product, your own product. They're using your own product to steal your traffic to their .equid.com subdomain and get themselves up higher and bury you with your own original blog post, with your own original product, yeah? It's terrible, absolutely terrible, yeah? Which is where it should come up here on thailandemulet.net, which is where my website is. And it's where Equid, I have put in my, I'm not sure where it is, but in the settings, refer a friend. I wouldn't even refer an enemy, my mate, my good people at Equid. With this crap here and your 
100 sales per page, 100 products per page, 50 second load time. You want me to refer you to a friend? Refer you to a friend? No. What I will do is refer my friends elsewhere. Shopify, Wix, Big Commerce. Those are big companies. Yeah. As to the support from Equid, they never even answer your emails. They, the support is zero. It went from fantastic to zero as light speed took over. As COVID hit, went to zero because the team at Equid were too small to handle it. And I understand that. I'm really sorry they had to step out because I miss them all. They were nice people. And Lightspeed's taken over and it is just, it's horrible. I feel like I'm working for Jeff Bezos or something, which is like Adolf Hitler, isn't it, you know? This feels like it's been taken over by the, by, by, by the Nazis or something, it really does. So there you go. From an equid lover to an equid hater, the webmaster, otherwise known as a John Spencer, pissed off as hell because I've got five or six of these shops and I really would like to get all of my products migrated somewhere else. And I'm thinking about paying somebody. If these uh, features I've been moaning about, 100 pages, 100 products per catalog per page, uh, 100 sales per page, if they don't put back that and the calendar in sales so that you can do a custom time span Look of how many sales you made between the 1st of September and the 13th of August or whatever, or the 13th of October, which was there and they've removed illegally. Firstly, I'll sue you. And secondly, I'll make smaller videos about Equid, how they removed these features, showing the screenshots of it there before and after. Because it was, I've got them. Don't think I don't keep evidence as the years pass. I take screenshots of Equid every now and again, every change before and after every change for my lawyers, just in case. Yeah, I learned that a long time ago from not doing it. I learned how to do it. So I quit. You put those features back, which are mine and were there since the beginning, or be sued. And take the feedback about the, uh, you may also like display products below the product widget to not show out of stock products because that's completely senseless. And that's not for me. Do that for all of your good customers who are using your product, who have online shops with Equid. Because if they're displaying, you may also like think products below the product the customer's looking at. Yeah, in the product page, when they reach the bottom, there is you may also like, like in eBay or Lazada or whatever. And all you see is out of stock products. If you go to Lazada or eBay, any of the you may also like products are never out of stock. They're always in stock. They don't show recommended you may also like products that are out of stock. They only show in stock products. Your widget here, uh, related products widget, cannot do that. It cannot differentiate which product is in stock or out of stock. It's probably about five lines of PHP or, J or, or J JSON or uh, JavaScript, yeah? It's probably just PHP or Python. You could do that with about five lines of PHP or Python, or 10 lines or something, yeah? To have it check products of that category is in stock, not in stock, yeah? Stock count zero or more than zero if more than zero display if less than zero if less than one do not display that's all you have to do so why can't you just program this here to show in stock products only not out of stock products. Because in the moment you're showing 90% out of stock products. Unless it's a shop that only has in stock products. Which is not most people's scenario. So that's the feedback. Is show products in stock only. Otherwise it's pointless. And I have to do it manually. And remove them manually once they're sold out. And put other ones in there. Which is ridiculous. In the, day, in the age of automation, yeah? And otherwise, please put that back in in products that I can paginate 10, 20, 50, 100, however many products I want 
Five, ten, twenty, fifty, a hundred is enough. That's how it usually is, how it was with the drop down list. Display five, ten, twenty, fifty, or a hundred products per page. All of a sudden it was gone and you set my product page to a hundred. That's a deliberate sabotage and a deliberate attempt to piss me off into upgrading. And that's almost criminal. In fact, it is criminal. It is criminal because you removed and messing with. That is deliberate manipulation. There's various charges. You can come under other criminal charges, not just IT uh, uh, terms of service charges. You can come under psychological torture. Now, there's all sorts of charges you can come under because I have PTSD and it is psycho to psychological torture for me to go to my products page and wait 50 seconds for it to load, knowing that you've removed the feature and deliberately done it to piss me off into upgrading, and knowing that the upgrade allows less products than my current account, which freaks me out, that for $17 you want me to pay 35 a month instead of 17 to have a limited amount of products instead of unlimited? You must be nuts. You must be, well, you are nuts, obviously. Corporate insanity. Yeah. So you put that back. Paginated products. And in the sales, you put the calendar back as well, which is quite normal. You've taken it out from silver accounts, early adopters. Thing is, you are not legally entitled to do that. That is illegal. You can't remove something that was given to us in the terms of service and was there. When we signed up, you can't remove that. And you're going to be sued for that if you don't put it back. Okay? So, everybody who's watching, don't risk signing up with Equid. Yeah? Because look what they do. Yeah? They take features away after you signed up. You sign up because you love this feature and that feature. After you've signed up, all of a sudden, they remove those features. Lovely. It means you can't trust them. Can you trust Equid? No, you cannot, because what they say today is going to change tomorrow. Therefore, don't sign up with them. Stay with a much bigger company like Shopify or something like that, because you've got a much better chance of it being more permanent and less uh, cowboy style behavior like this, because it's, it's the behavior of a small team of cowboys. It really is. Equid were not cowboys. They were very, a small team of very able people. But Lightspeed seems to me to be a small team of people with absolutely no clue how to succeed by doing it ethically. And they're actually destroying their own reputation by this unethical, deliberate uh, sabotage that they are doing on early adopter silver accounts, who are the people who made them in the first place. Because you don't deploy a half-baked, not-ready e-commerce solution for people to pay monthly subscriptions for unless you are out of money and you can't finish the product. So they deployed the product online, offered it at $17 a month because it's not ready yet. But we can't afford to keep developing it. We've run out of money. So we need some sign-ups before it's even ready. So I said, okay, I'll do that. But it wasn't ready yet. It was only half-baked. So we were the good people for trusting, signing up and waiting for the features to arrive. And then Lightspeed comes along and takes them away from us. You evil people, you. You evil, evil people. You don't even appreciate the people who made you because you were going to go bust if you didn't get any sign-ups before you'd even completed developing your product. You deployed it half-baked because you ran out of money. And you let people sign up with a half-baked product. And to make up for that, you offered them $17 a month for life for free. Payable yearly or monthly. Now you've taken the yearly payments away and said, that's not available for silver. Well, it was, and you don't have the right to remove it because it was in terms of service that you don't remove anything that was already existing at the time. Yeah? Except for certain cases through improving this feature, but not removing it. 
Yeah, this feature is, appears here instead of here now, but it doesn't disappear. It's just been improved or updated, but you don't remove a feature that was useful, good, still exists in other accounts that are not early adopters. adopters. I'm quite sure the $99 a month version allows me to paginate less than 100 products a page here, right? And this one did as well. So why have you removed it? Why have you removed it? Because it was there. You have removed it. Why? You're not allowed to. It was there when I signed up. Yeah? And under the legal terms of service, you're not allowed to remove that. That's one of the features I signed up for with my $17 a month. And you've removed the feature. You can't do that. So be sued or put it back, okay? Don't use Equid, anybody. Because you have to end up threatening to sue them or put it put back what they took from you. It's absolutely disgusting. Lightspeed, I don't know who you are, but you're going to go bust if you keep this attitude. You're going to go bust. Which worries me because all my products are in your pro are in your product. If I could pay somebody who could efficiently take them all out and put them in a WooCommerce for me because the feed doesn't work. Don't think you can export your product feed from Equid into somewhere else. They say you can. You cannot. It doesn't work. Do not use Equid. Bunch of unethical bastards. It used to be a great family, great team. Now it's just turned into something. Uh, oh, They're removing. You're paying every month. And as you pay, they're removing features to try to make you pay more for them. Features that were free and promised to be free always or included within your your subscription deal. And they keep changing and flip-flopping. Well, that's how to lose your customers and lose your reputation. And you have done with me already. I'm just stuck with you, that's all. 100 products a page, 50-second load time, removing features from the account. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. All this sneaky behavior shows that one should not use your services because your behavior is so sneaky. Equid has sneaky, unethical, and illegal behavior. Okay? So I hope you all have a day, good day. But to whoever gave these orders to change my interface like this and deliberately play mind games with somebody who's suffering PTSD, if you don't put them back, prepare to be sued for breach of terms of service and removing features you're not allowed to, but also prepare to be sued for psychological torture on a PTSD sufferer, yeah? Because you are actually causing me mental distress, yeah? You are causing me mental distress at Equid, light speed, sorry, yeah? So, when I sue you, if you don't put these things back, I will be suing you not only for the IT matter, I will be suing you for psychological torture, and some other things, which I won't say. But I don't think you realize that the charges will be multiple. And they won't be just IT related. They will be social related. And legal related. To terms of service, one thing. But the psychological torture is another thing. Yeah? And the psychological torture, that's going to cost you. Because you've done it deliberately. It's been done deliberately to put mental stress on me. And I will prove that this page has been put to 100 products and slow load deliberately to put mental stress on me to force me into upgrading and paying double to get half of what I had before. Pay double to get 20,000 products instead of pay 17, pay half. To get unlimited products. I pay $17 for unlimited products. And you want you want to put me under mental stress with this 100 pages and orders per product 50 second load time. To make me upgrade to business account. So that I have 20,000 products limited instead of unlimited. You must be insane. That's a downgrade not an upgrade. And to make me downgrade to pay double for half of what I had before. You have... Played head games with me by removing the tool here that allows in sales, removing the tool of the calendar, 
Here, removing the tool that allows me to paginate 10 products per page, five products per page, so that the page loads faster, and forced it to 100 products per page, so that it loads really slow, and removed the feature. And the same with orders. That is a deliberate decision to put psychological stress on me, and I suffer PTSD. So you have given orders to put psychological stress on early adopter silvers by removing features and making the interface really boring, 50 second load times with 100 products per page, unable to change it, can't check your order calendar per calendar date, per custom, remove that feature illegally because it was there with the sign up. You can't do that. Well, you can, but you will be sued. So I will be looking within one week from now, and now is the 15th of September, 2022. So I'm on the 22nd of September, 2022. I am going to check all of my shops. And if this feature to paginate my products with less than 100 products to choose how many products are shown on each paginated page and choose how many orders are on each paginated page and to be able to look at a custom date range time range of sales on my dashboard in the sales now you put it in the dashboard last 30 days it should be here in sales in orders that you can filter the last 30 days uh, this calendar month um from the first from the third of september to the 8th of October, if you're looking for a particular order between the 9th of September and the 7th of September, somebody who ordered something, I want to look for a specific order in a specific date, you've removed that feature. So that feature should go back into orders. Orders should be able to display different numbers of orders per page to reduce loading time. The products should also have be able to show 5, 10, 20, 50 or 100 products per page or 200 even if you want to load it slowly. Put those features back. One, two, three. Uh, the calendar for the sales. How many, how many sales per page you can paginate on? How many sales are displayed per page? How many products are displayed per page? Put those three features back or be sued. And... For all viewers, just look, look what they did. They took three features away and deliberately set this to 100 products to make it load slow to put psychological stress on the end user to upsell and force you into upgrading because they don't want the early adopters anymore. The people who saved them from bankruptcy when they were only halfway through their product the people who signed up for a half-baked product that didn't have all of the feature features needed and put up with it for months and years while they developed it. But now you don't appreciate us. Yeah? You don't appreciate the people who made it possible for you to actually finish your product because you ran out of money before you finished it, deployed it as a product online for customers without all the features needed, and explained, we're still developing, but if you're good enough to sign up as an early adopter and put up with this bullshit, we promise $17 for life. We will never change the price and we won't remove the features you have already and we will add lots of more features until it is a fully fledged e-commerce solution, at least in the basic. And as a great thank you, the unlimited products and unlimited categories that you will enjoy this for life. And Lightspeed don't like what the early adopters have for their measly $17 a month. So they're trying to squeeze blood out of our stone. The thing is, what they don't realize is that they're in breach of terms of service by doing so. They are uh, disrespecting the people who saved them from bankruptcy because Equid is the only half-baked product I've seen presented online as an e-commerce solution when it wasn't even ready yet because they ran out of money and needed some sign-up money to keep developing, to pay their developers. And I'm one of those people who enabled them to be able to do that. If not, Equid wouldn't exist. So you stop taking features away from the people who stopped you from going bankrupt halfway through your project right at the beginning in 2009-2010 when I signed up. 
because you were going bankrupt and you needed some sign up but you didn't have a product yet to really ask anybody to sign up for because it was half baked now you stop taking features away from the control panel of the early adopters because the early adopters are kind of like your first investors who actually made it possible for you to kickstart so respect the people who fucking invested in you and put faith in you at the beginning because we're the ones who made it possible to say that equid still exists in this day and age and that equid ever came into existence without us equid would have failed because you didn't have enough money or sign-ups. You didn't have a product and you ran out of money. You had half a product and you put it online begging us to sign up at $17 a month for life as a reward for helping you finish the product because you didn't have enough money. And now you're starting to shit on us because you don't need us anymore? Huh? Like the privateers were hired by the British and the Spanish armadas to rob each other of their gold? And when they weren't needed anymore, they were called pirates. And they were no longer the honorable uh, servants of Queen Elizabeth and Queen Katerina. They were unwanted people, declared pirates and should be hung by the neck. And so, we helped you set up Equid by being early adopters. But now you don't need us because you've got enough money coming in. You want to get rid of us, just like Queen Katerina wanted to get rid of her privateers, so declared them all a bunch of thieves. Study the history of piracy. That created the pirates. They threw them away and said, these people used to help us steal gold to make our empire rich, just like we helped you yeah, to develop your product by signing up when it was still half-baked and putting up with it. You should be kissing our feet, not removing features, because we are the people who invested and gave you the funds to be able to finish the Equid product. And without the early adopters, silver account holders, Equid project, eco, Equid e-commerce widget would have gone bankrupt halfway through its development. So respect the people who made you because that's us, early adopters, silver. Because you couldn't get anyone else except able webmasters and people ready to put up with that and to invest in it So because they knew it would be expensive later and the benefit is cheaper. But don't expect you to start playing psychological games with us, removing features sneakily, one by one, and setting up our pages to make it bothersome, to try and force us into upgrading, because you're playing with somebody who is already mentally disturbed with PTSD. Complex PTSD, yeah? It's called CPTSD. And you are causing me mental distress. So, be careful. Because you're about to be sued for breach of terms of service as a silver early adopter by removing features yeah, and by deliberately setting up the 100 product slow load product and orders pages to put psychological stress on the end user and force an upgrade, an upsell. Because this particular end user has CTPTSD and I'm undergoing extreme distress at what you are doing to me playing games with me with the equid interface so you are about to be sued not just for breach of terms of service for silver early adopters you are about to risk also being sued for mental abuse huh? of the end user and i think that's going to carry a much heavier financial or punishment than anything the corporate accusation will bring yeah because that's a more of a human rights thing and a mental illness and mental health thing and I'm going to accuse you of that because you are causing me mental distress and you are playing deliberate mind games with my interface and that of all early adopter silver account holders so thanks very much, Equid, for making assholes out of yourself, showing the public what a bunch of unethical mind game players you are and what a bunch of greedy bastards you are. Hmm. The Webmaster, otherwise known as Ajahn Spencer, signing off. <laughs>